everybody. Well, welcome uh, to uh, our keynote session for the night. <coughs> uh, my name is Michael Poku. I work in Signal Life here. And it's uh, my absolute pleasure to get to introduce to all of you um, the keynote for the night, uh, Mr. Patrick McGarry uh, over here. Uh, so this lets you know a little bit about Patrick. Um, while he was in college, he uh, kind of uh, gave into some social pressures and began relying on his credit cards to fund all of his social activities. <clears throat> After the riding roller coaster of four of four figure income and four figure debt, uh, Patrick gathered simple money related practices and formed the big money and big life presentation, as you see tonight. Uh, and these presentations focus on the pitfalls uh, he experienced during college as well as his first few years in the real world. Uh, so he is now a firm, um, now a firm plan to put Patrick is amazed the number of people that don't know the basis about the importance of financial stability and the hopes that through his presentations uh, that today's students, all of you, can avoid making the same mistakes that he did. Uh, and so he's up to save many of us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so without any further ado, um, Patrick McGarry. Introduction. Welcome everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, I'm going to try to make this. We're going to go six to about six fifty-five, so you can get to any seven o'clock classes that you might have. Again, real quickly, my name is Patrick McGarry. I'm here from Chicago, Illinois. I attempted to try to go someplace warmer than it was in Chicago, and I think I took the wrong turn here and ended up uh, with you where it's just a bit colder and a little more snow on the ground. <laughs> So, a couple things you're probably asking yourself is what am I going to talk about today? Well, Michael's description, probably the description in the agenda, talk about what kind of keeps a lot of financial trouble. Practical, somewhat common sense things that I'd like to share with you today. Mistakes that I made when I was in school, and basically you're saying, well, what makes you the expert? Well, I'm not here to sell you things. I don't want your email address. I promise I'm not going to get in touch with you. This is literally learning from my mistakes. And one of my mistakes was being $7,000 in credit card debt when I was in school. So that's in addition to my student loans, which was pure credit card debt. So what am I going to do here today? Well, we're going to do this in a fun formatted game show kind of way. So if you've ever seen the show Street Smarts, if you've ever heard Jay Leno do his jaywalking routine, <coughs> I'm interviewing students around the country at colleges, and I'm going to ask you if you think they know the correct answer. So kind of a little fun, interactive, multimedia, all wrapped up into this presentation. So you're saying game show, right? Well, game shows usually give away money. The answer to your next question is, do you give away money? And that is yes. This bag is filled with five, ten, and twenty dollar bills. Certain of you will get a chance to go into the big money machine so you can grab that cash. And I know, I don't know, we give away a lot of five and ten, but there are twenties in this bag. So yes, that is going to be some money fun for everybody. So the first question, and this is just kind of to get, ever, get everyone interested in what we're doing here today, what was the earliest form of human currency? Now I'm not asking you to answer or to answer this question, but Lori and Becky answered it for me, and I simply need just one person just in your seat, raise your hand and say yes or no, right there. What do you think? Did they know the correct answer to that question? No. No. All right, so we're going to come down here, we're going to click on no, we're going to listen to what Lori and Becky have to say. What was the earliest form of human currency? Of human currency? Wait. Mm -hmm. What? My phone. Don't say body parts. Okay. Okay. Final answer. My final answer is probably going to be what? Your final answer? Come on, Betty. I think. That's your final answer? Yeah. Alright, that is the correct answer. Oh! What happened to the back seat? I had to sell it for gas money. Which I spent on a novelty horn. Maybe we should talk to a financial planner. Financial panther, eh? Mr. Simpson, you're a dollar overdrawn. Don't 
You probably are very familiar with some of these fees, the annual fee, just to be able to use that little piece of plastic, the late fee, just by being one day or one hour late making your payment, the over-the-limit fee. We have a limit of $500, maybe $1,000. We charge over that limit. Boom, we get hit with another fee. If we don't pay the entire balance off that we have, we're going to get hit with interest or finance charges. So the bank obviously is making hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars on these types of fees. My advice, and when it comes to the good, all of these fees are negotiable. What does that mean? That says, if you are late with a payment, contact the credit card company immediately. Let them know, hey, I'm a student, don't have time, forgot, whatever the excuse might be, let them put that on their record, and then when you get hit with that late payment fee and interest and finance charges, contact the bank again. It's a two-minute conversation. There is a good chance every six months that they will give you what's called a courtesy. They'll, they'll give you a courtesy and they'll waive those fees, okay? They're not going to waive them if you don't call and make the effort. It's also not a guarantee, but it's worth a shot. All right, some more of that. People who live beyond their means. And that's really what's gotten our country in trouble over the past few years. People are buying bigger houses than they can afford. They're going on trips that they can't afford. They're buying material possessions that they can't afford. And one of the ways that they've been able to do that is with having a credit card. You have that credit card in your possession, you think, I don't have the cash, but I can slot down the plastic, pay for it, take it home. I would like everyone to live under, beneath, below, or at least within your means. The good are sometimes you just don't have the cash. Okay, you need to buy that computer, you need to buy books, you have an emergency situation, something's the matter with your car. Those are all great reasons to have the credit card. You can pay those big ticket items off over time. A credit card can also help establish your credit rating. Finally, the ugly. Things can get ugly, and they got very ugly for me with my $7,000 in credit card debt. I maxed out one card, went to my second, quickly went to my third. Bad, bad times for Patrick. You can also become a victim of credit card fraud. And I never thought so much about this. I thought credit card fraud does it really happen with the big deal until I got a phone call. And that phone call said, Mr. McGarity, we think you're a victim of credit card fraud. And I said, well, you know what? I travel all over the country doing this presentation. I stay in hotels. I eat out at restaurants. I'm sure that, that there's just some confusion there. And they said, well, have you ever signed up for LavaLife.com? And I wasn't familiar with LavaLife.com. And then he said, have you ever signed up for eHarmony.com? And then he added Match.com to it. And I said, well, I'm happily married, so I don't think I would be on those websites. So somebody obviously took my credit card information and signed up for these different sites. Now, luckily for me, they caught it. I guess people have been doing that kind of often. They caught it, and they credited me back the charges for that, so I was not responsible for them. Here's exactly how ugly things can get us. We have a few Family Guy fans on Spooner Street. Look, why don't I just put us up at a nice hotel for a couple of days? Oh, that's a great idea, Brian. It'll be like a little vacation. Well, you might want to bring some cash with you. Because, you know, some places don't take credit cards. But, mister, I need real money. I can't take a credit card. Oh, I see. Cash only, eh? Eh? No paper trail. Eh? What are you selling? Dripper, crack, smack, boss, X, shrooms, dust, mask? In my head, boy? I don't think so. <laughs> Peter took things a little too far there. Sorry about that. Hey, so a question I often get, and I do allow you to ask questions. I try to save them for after the presentation. I'll be here as long as you need me to. But how late is late when it comes to making a payment? Well, I just told you that banks make hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, whenever they charge all these fees. But what I'd like everyone to do is pay their entire balance on time every month. One way to guarantee you'll pay your balance on time Send the minimum payment in right away, and then later on, if you can afford to make a bigger payment than that, add that payment within that same month. They don't care. Send them two payments. Send them three payments. The other thing you can do is sign up for online bill pay with your credit card. Guarantee you don't even have to think about it. It will automatically pay your credit card on the day each month. 
Okay? Sign up for it before it's due, though, because sometimes it takes a day or two. So if you pay your entire balance on time every month, you are considered a superstar. Banks love you, and you're thinking, but Patrick, you just told me that banks make billions of dollars. Well, they also spend lots of money tracking down those who don't make their payments on time. They're sending letters, they're calling, they're losing money on people. So believe it or not, they're actually happy with those that pay their entire money on time. Now, if you can't do that, and I think that's where a lot of us get into trouble, we charge so much, we can't pay the entire balance, but I'm asking you to pay the minimum payment plus the interest that you owe. In other words, it's more than the minimum payment. We're going to see a scenario in a couple of minutes where we're going to talk about that more specifically. But if you do this, believe it or not, you're better than the average Joe. And I think we all would like to be better than average. Because the average person out there makes that minimum payment and, for the most part, makes it on time. Okay? They've got 30 days or 20 days to make the payment. They do so. Those people are staying the course. But unfortunately, we have some space here at the bottom for those people that make the minimum payment not exactly on time. That's great that they're making that payment, but they're also negatively affecting their credit report, their credit score. Those folks are asking for trouble. And finally, we have those that don't make any payment. They figured, hey, you know what? I'm living, I'm going to be moving after I'm done with school. I've got a new job, so what's going to happen? Hey, you know, I don't need the, the credit card company isn't going to follow me. They're not going to know where I live. Your credit card is tied to your social security number. So guess what's going to happen? They're going to track you down. They're going to find you. And if not, your credit score, your credit rating, your credit history is going to be due. All right, moving right on, we've got another question. Let's get on with this game show. I asked a couple of students here to pronounce the word amortization and use it correctly in a sentence. So what I need is somebody to be Gerson. You have to be Gerson, I'll give you Gerson. Uh, I'll let somebody be Tiana. Someone just Tiana. We'll give you Tiana. And finally, I need somebody to be neither, meaning neither will get it correct. So and we'll give you neither. All right, here we go. Okay. Can you pronounce this word and use it in a sentence? Uh, Mortalization. Uh, I went through the process of mortalization. I went through the process of immortalization. Okay. For those of you that don't know, the word is amortization. Somehow my friend uh, Gerson here called it immortalization. I don't know if he's planning on living an awful long time or what he's doing here. Uh, but sorry, uh, Gerson is not the winner. Uh, let's try Tiana. Pronounce this word and use it in a sentence. Amortization. Amortization. Okay. She had the amortization for dog. She had the amortization for dog. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're good on the pronunciation, not so good on the uh, use in a sentence. Making you a winner, I will give you a choice of if you would like to take money out of the bag or be the first person to go in the money booth. You're going to go bag? Okay. All right, five, ten, twenty. Good luck. And she's got a ten dollar winner. Ten dollar winner. Give her a little round of applause for that, right? There you go. Just a little round of applause. So to amortize something is to pay it off over time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on spring break together. You know, maybe it's not a real spring break, it's a virtual spring break in South Padre, South Padre Island. Airline tickets, of course, are going to cost a couple hundred dollars, three fifty. Of course, we need our sweet ass clothes for another hundred dollars. Uh, different expenses we might have. Uh, shaking our money maker with the finest clubs there in South Padre for another hundred and fifty. We're going to cram ourselves with our friends into a transient hotel fast food we've got to eat and finally we have some beverages for another buck fifty so this grand total of one thousand and twenty five dollars come on here we go there we go one thousand and twenty five dollars now some of you may be thinking i'm not going to be going on spring break come on patrick that's just not what i'm going to do well this scenario can be one thousand dollars of anything that you would put on your credit card it could be the car repair it could be the books it could be essential to live day to day so just because you're not doing a spring break doesn't mean you can ignore this screen. The next question I have is how much do you think the typical student would save for spring break? And if you say anything over $100, I don't believe you. Any guesses out there? Right, probably about $0 because every one of these expenses you can put on all together now, 
your credit card, right? So that's what happens. You put all these expenses on your credit card, you go to your five wonderful days in South Padre, even though they tell you this a week, and you get back and your statement appears at the door and it says, pay the minimum of $20. That's all you gotta pay, $20. Your interest rate on that credit card is 21.9%, not to win money, but how long do you think it would take to pay off that $1,000 at $20 a month with that interest rate? Any guesses? 10 years. 10, 3, 12, 12 3, eternity. Eternity, I always get a number on eternity, two and a half. Excellent, very good guesses. Believe it or not, the answer is 149 months or just under 12 and a half years to pay that off. 12 and a half years. So some of you in this room, you're going to be celebrating your 30th birthday at the same time you're paying off your spring break trip that you took back in, in 2013. Excuse me. So this isn't about don't go on spring break. This isn't about don't use a credit card. It's about paying more than the minimum payment. So let's look at that exact same scenario again. Okay? Everything's the same, $1,025. The big difference is right here. I want you to pay $50 a month. I want you to pay $60 if you can. There's going to be a month where you'll only be able to afford $20. That's great. Pay more than the minimum payment if you can. So under this scenario, how long do you think it would take to pay off your balance now, paying that additional $30 per month? Four months? Four? Do you say 60 months? 70. 60 months. 70. Okay. And they can do that math. Okay, just under six. Oh, got it. Uh, six years, five years. Would you believe 26 months? So just over two years, a difference of almost 10 years, you're going to save. But more importantly, you're going to save significant money. Scenario one, that $1,000 trip cost you $3,000 because of all the interest just by paying that minimum. Scenario two, a mere $30 more per month. Look at that. You pay $265 extra dollars in interest. Significant change based on the fact that you added more than the minimum payment. All right, we've got Matt, a senior at Buena Vista University, and I asked Matt the question, if I said you had a nice fair Isaac score, I'd be talking about your blank. Do you think Matt knows the correct answer to this question? In the blue shirt in the back there, what do you think? You're, I see you're no. shaking your head no. All right, he's going to say no. We're going to click on no and listen to Matt. If I said you had a nice fair Isaac score, I'd be talking about... What was fair Isaac fair Isaac score? Um, I'd be hitting on you. You gotta be kidding me! Oh my god! That is hysterical! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Alright, you know, if I were complimenting him on his fair Isaac score, I would definitely not be hitting on him. I'd be saying, hey, good job, you're doing great making your bill payments on time, you're doing all the right stuff when it comes to credit cards. So, your next question was, what the heck is a fair Isaac score? You probably haven't heard of those words. You may have heard of a FICO score, a credit score, an empirical score, a beacon score. Any of those? Know any of those? Yeah, a couple of those. Well, what happens is this, this company, the Fair Isaac Company, comes along, and what they do is they calculate a score based on your credit report. Do you have a winner back there? I'm sorry. <laughs> Would you like the booth or the bag? You go with that? All right, let's let's do that right now before we carry on here. Mike, are we gonna get this on uh, capture this on video? <laughs> All right, here he goes. You look a little nervous. Are you having second second thoughts about this? I don't like crowds. You don't like crowds? No. Okay. Nobody look. Everyone turn around. Don't watch. What's your name? Jordan. All right, Jordan. Come on in here. So I've got a couple of rules. There's air air holes at the top. Don't worry. Uh, when the money's on the ground, you can't pick it up. It's got to be flying around in order to grab it. And number two, uh, when it's stuck to the ceiling at the end, it'll fall, but you got to wait for it to fall. I put it on my shirt. If you're in it, completely up to you. After those are my only rules. All I wish you is good luck. Kick the money around when it's uh, caught in the corners. Here you go. Jordan, go, 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 go. Thank you. 
start coming down like rainy money on you. Alright, are you ready for that? Alright, here we go. Five, four, three, two, and one. And there it goes, and there it goes. And there's your nice job. Well done. We got one in your hood. Alright, alright. Um, <laughs> Alright, so lots of information on your credit report. Alright? Personal information up at the top, where your current address, former address, current employer, former employer does not have income information on there, doesn't have asset information on there. But at the bottom it has all of your loans, such as car loans, mortgages, bank loans, student loans. It will even have credit cards, charge cards, uh, department store cards are all listed here. So your credit report can be one page, it can be 21 pages. There's no stopping that credit report. So the Fair Isaac Company, what they do is they say, hey, we're going to take this report and we're going to come up with a score. And based on that score, you're either going to be denied credit, denied the ability to buy a house or to buy a car, or we're going to give you the ability to do that. So in other words, you want the highest credit score possible. The Fair Isaac Company, what they do is they say, hey, 35% of your credit score is based on paying your bills on time. So these very narrow columns that you see here show how many times you've been 30 days late making a payment. 60 days, 90 days, 120 days. You don't want numbers in those columns. Another 30% is your ratio of debt to credit available. In other words, you don't want your credit cards maxed out or even close to maxed out. Rule of thumb, says about 30, even though the number there is 30%, says about 30%. So if you have a $1,000 credit limit, you don't want to have more than $300 charged on that particular card. Another 15% is your credit history. How do you establish your credit history? Having these type of loans. Am I telling you to go out and get a credit card just to establish credit history? No. Not a bad idea, it's a way in which you can start establishing, but I think you need to answer that question for yourself. Another 10% are your credit inquiries. We're here in Target land, we've all shopped at Target. When we go through the, uh, to pay for our things, usually the person at the cash register says, would you like to save 5% today, right? Why? Because they're gonna offer you, what, is it the red card, the Target card? So that, could, that would be a credit inquiry. If you say, yes, I would like to do that, they are going to inquire, they are going to check your credit score, check your credit rating, and determine whether or not you can get credit, and also determine the amount, the limit that you can receive. Finally, the variety of loans that you have will also be brought into consideration for this score. All right, so now you're saying, great, Patrick, I know there's this score, it's Fair Isaac, FICO score, whatever, but what is it even used for? Well, when you go to get a job, okay, first job, second job, whatever job, they're going to look at your, or may look at your credit report and compare that to another candidate. So you could actually get or lose a chance of a job based on your credit report. The ability to buy a house, the ability to buy your first condo, to rent an apartment, even like Johnny here, who was on his way to get his first car, but he didn't quite make it there, when you buy a car and the automobile insurance that you buy can be determined by your credit report. Okay? Lots of stuff out there. Guarantee that in the next two, if not five years, every one of you will have touched one of these different areas. All right, kind of a fun question here. I need somebody to be Miriam, Matt, and Raina, and I want to know who got the most outrageous item on their credit card. What do you, who do you think? Miriam? Raina. Raina. You've got Raina. Who would you like? Matt. And Miriam is left way back in the back in the red. Who got you? Who are Miriam? You've got Miriam. I have Miriam. They've got Raina and then Matt right here. Okay. Here we go. Name the most outrageous item you bought on the credit card. I think I've been pretty responsible as far as that goes by anything. Um, oh, I bought a pair of shoes. Pair of shoes that he couldn't send back. That's kind of outrageous. Let's try Miriam. Name the most outrageous item you bought on a credit card. Um, it was a cover pair. I don't even know what it was. Hardware. Okay. 
All right, Miriam's car repair. I'm glad that she's actually using her credit card for those emergency situations. All right, down to Raina here. Name the most outrageous item you bought on a credit card. Pair of jeans, two fifty. Pair of jeans for two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. So let's put our hands together if we think it's Miriam's car repair. Who is Miriam? Okay, at least maybe just stop for yourself. Just to... I will. Okay, all right, there we go. How about, oh, you had the, oh, gotcha. How about Matt's pair of shoes? If they were like $200 Jordans or something. Yeah, like, yeah, the old, the old school ones. Yeah, I don't think they were, though. <laughs> uh, how about Reno's $250 pair of jeans? Anybody on that? Clap, yeah, hands together. No, yeah. Maybe it's really good. Woo! Maybe it's her only pair of jeans and she's still wearing it. I think we gotta give that to Reno. Bag? Okay. Right. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Alright, we'll go back. Where'd she go? No, no, go ahead. Another $10 winner. Congratulations. See? Making money is a big money presentation. Thank you very much. Let's get an applause. So do these credit scores... Oh, you know what? Before I go on, does anyone want to admit to something outrageous that they bought using a credit card or not using a credit card? I've had some pretty good ones. Okay, yes. Um, I bought one of my bulldog puppies off of my credit card. Your bulldog puppies? One of them. Which means how many do you have? Six. Oh my. These are real dogs. Yes. <laughs> okay, so um, do you mind if I ask how much they were? Or how much this one was? Mm -hmm. Just so we have an idea how much. Fifty-five. Fifty-five. Okay. Fifty-five dollars? Fifty-five hundred. Excuse me? <laughs> okay, I'm looking for the... Go ahead, what do you got? Uh, $100 sunglasses. $100 sunglasses. Do you still wear them? No. No, no. I think I broke, yeah, right? What do you got? Oh, I bought an unlocked phone. Oh, an unlocked phone, okay. That's, not, that's a good idea. An investment. An investment, I see you're going to resell it later on, right? In the back. Six hundred dollar watch. Do you still have it? You still love it? You have a lot of watches. You got the watch collector and the bulldog collector. <laughs> Who would have thought? All right. So let's put our hands together again. If we think that it is the uh, unlocked phone. Okay. How about the uh, hundred dollars for the sunglasses that he no longer has? I think I know where this is going. Uh, how about the $600 watch of many watches? We like the watch, we like the watches. How about the $5,500 bulldog? An investment. It's an investment. All right, I'll make the watch back here. Yeah, I have now contributed bulldog reading <laughs> to the state of Minnesota. I'm hoping that's all on the up and up. Yeah. Credit scores. Do these credit scores matter? Well, let's say it's graduation time and we need to buy a car because we need to get from our home to where we work. Well, I'm going to say it's a $20,000 car. And yes, I understand we can buy cheaper cars than $20,000 cars. But, of course, we don't have $20,000, so we have to borrow it. And we're going to borrow this over a five-year period. So you walk into the car dealer and you say, I want that car. And oh, by the way, I saw a commercial that says 1.9% financing is what I can get. And they say back to you, but did you listen to the entire commercial? So what do they say at the end of those commercials? For well-qualified listeners. Love it. For well-qualified buyers, for qualified buyers, they've even heard for extremely well-qualified buyers. I'm going to show you what one of those look like. They're the ones that have the FICO score, get it, Fair Isaac score, in the 760 to 850 range. They're going to get that 1.9. Their monthly payment's going to be 350. In addition to the 20,000, they're going to pay about another thousand dollars in interest. What happens is, as your Fair Isaac score goes down because you're missing payments and you have your cards maxed out, interest rate up, monthly payment goes up, and obviously your interest. So we have the person down here with not even the lowest credit rating. But they're going to pay an additional almost $7,000 for the exact same car that the person did up in the top score. Doesn't sound like a good use of money. Well, let's switch gears a little bit and look at buying a house. You buy a house over a longer period of time, and in this case we're going to say a $150,000 house over a 30-year period. 
So here's what happens in this case. Your FICO score, the higher it is, and I know that rates are definitely lower than what we're seeing here, but your monthly payment becomes 845. You have this person at the bottom, their payment is $1,000. The person in the bottom, even though they're only paying $155 more a month, paid 50,000 more dollars for the exact same $150,000 house. $50,000. I love to say that you can actually gain money by being in my presentation. I can say that you can save tens if not hundreds if not thousands, but this tip right here could save you tens of thousands of dollars. All right, we've got the pop quiz. The pop quiz, I want to see everybody's hand who's been paying attention the entire presentation. Oh, come on, nobody? No. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Paying attention to the entire reason. Who wants to take the pop quiz? I just need one person, one person, one person. We'll go with you right there. Are you ready for this? All right. Are you nervous? A little. A little bit. Okay. Here's your first question. Unless I can pay off my entire monthly credit card balance, I should at least do what? If you can't pay the whole thing off, do what? Pay the minimum payment on time and then extra if you can. Yes. Excellent. Pay more than the minimum payment due, and I love that on time part too. All right, you're one for one. An easy way to avoid financial trouble is to live credit, I mean, debt-free. Debt-free is good. Uh, there's a couple other words. You might be able to pull the audience or someone might be able to... Within, under, beneath. Within, under, beneath, below, somehow don't live beyond your needs. Excellent, oh, yeah. you're two for two, kind of. Uh, number three, 65% of your fair Isaac score is determined by what two things? There was the, uh, two pieces of the pie, one was 35 and one was 30. Anyone else has got it? The female on the was 35 and debit and credit ratio of 30. Wow, he's got his uh, best friends right back there. <laughs> Did you hear any of that? Yeah. Um, he, um, Pay it on time and then um, debit ratio. Debit, that's credit ratio, absolutely. Yeah. Pay your bills on time and having the low credit card balances, which turns into a low uh, debt to credit ratio. All right, let's see if we can get this one on your own. Cool. All right, this one's going to be the qualifier. Two things that your credit score or report affect. So all those different things that were flying in, I said it's important when you go to do what? Buying a house. And car work, car, excellent. You got a car insurance, buying a house or car, renting an apartment, getting a job with all the possibilities. All right, here you go. Cash, cash, cash. And I'll point to the guy who you need to be splitting this with. Okay. You're going to get 250 out of that. <laughs> all right, congratulations. Another $5 winner. All right, one of my favorite parts of the show is called Who Do You Want to Be? And I've got two people here, and I used to Usually I like to play who you want to be with a couple of people sitting next to each other, you know, good friends that can kind of, you know, battle back and forth as I go through Toby and Rose. So, who are they? Oh, we'll go with the, both of you there. Can I go that way? Is that all right? Okay, both of you. I need one of you to be Toby and one of you to be Roby. I'll be uh, Toby. Toby on my right, Roby on my left. Got it. So what happens with Toby and Roby is they get their first credit card. They're very excited. Uh, the first month, Toby goes out and buys gas for the car and essentials that he needs, whereas Roby goes out and buys the Xbox 360, oh come on, Roby, and five games. The good news for both of them is they both pay off the entire balance, good for you. It's new, it's novel, it's a credit card, of course you're going to do it. But the third month comes along and you start, you know, you're getting busy with school, midterms, just things are starting to happen, so what happens, Toby starts eating off campus. Roby goes on a shopping spree. Uh-oh. In addition to that, Toby, you pay off your balance, which is great, but you make a late payment. Roby, you make a late payment, but you only pay the minimum. But then the sixth month comes along, and it's student success day here on campus, and you see that the big money presentation is coming to your campus. So what happens, Toby says, I don't have time for that, whereas Roby says, you know what, I could probably stand to use a little bit of information about finances and learning about this stuff after all. So for the rest of the year, Toby starts charging everything under the sun, on the internet, to the mall, wherever, whereas Roby focuses on paying down her balance. Excuse me, his balance. 
Toby, on the other hand, maxes out credit cards and uses that dreaded cash advance. If you don't know this already, you can use your credit card to actually take money out like an eight at an ATM. Avoid that at all costs. And I'm sorry if I brought that up. Yes, how much is the interest? Like 36% and it starts the minute you take it out. I mean, there's no grace period, nothing. Avoid it, please. Wait, so, so just on that transaction or your full credit card? Just no, that transaction, that $40 that you took out because you don't have any money in your bank account or, oh, I used my wrong card and whatever, so 40 bucks comes out, boom, 37% right away. So, Roby, you're going to go on an occasional splurge once in a while. So four years later, graduation time, both with $15,000 in student loans, not so bad, but Toby, just like me, $6,000 in credit card debt. Ouch. A year later, you both have your eyes on this car. Guess what? Roby, you're going to get that 1.9. Toby, too bad. You're at 8%. In addition to that, you both have your eyes on this great apartment that you would love to rent. You both submit applications and your credit report to the landlord, and the landlord said, you got to be kidding me, Toby. You can't even make your payments on time to your credit card. I'm not going to trust you where you're going to have to pay me every month for rent. Roby, on the other hand, gets that cool apartment. And Roby does something even better. Roby says, landlord, could you take $50 per month off my rent? But the landlord says, you've got to be crazy. Where's Toby at? I need Toby back. And you say, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know what, landlord? I make all my payments on time. I bet you spend most of your month chasing people who don't pay their rent on time. And the landlord scratches his head and says, you know what, you're right. How about we split the difference? I'll give you $25 off per month. Okay? $300 savings right there just because of your good credit. Ten years later, Toby, you're still renting, driving the same car. Again, I have no problem with either of those things. Roby, though, based on the credit report, homeowner drives a new car every couple of years. So let's all try to be a little bit more like Roby here. And I've got the money for this person in the back here. Yeah. We got. All right, another ten dollar winner. Very happy ten dollar winner, I think. So we're going to uh, move off the credit thing here for a bit and talk about this word fishing. And everyone, of course, since we're in uh, Minnesota, knows all about fishing, right? You know about this fishing, though. So I've talked to a Robert, Amanda, and Tim and asked them to pronounce the word fishing and use it correctly in a sentence. So I need a, a, a Robert, an Amanda, and a Tim. Uh, in the back of the glasses? Robert. Right here with the hat? And we'll go over here to Amanda. I'm going to give you Amanda. And away we go. Can you pronounce this word and use it in a sentence? Fishing, and I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, she did say the word fishing. Um, not sure where she got that, but uh, yeah, that's what we got from Amanda. Sorry about that. And Amanda, sorry too. Uh, let's go, Tim. I'm going to show you a word, and if you can pronounce it and use it in a sentence. And Tim, can you pronounce it? Okay. Can you use it in a sentence? Okay. I have no idea. All right. All right, so we're over two. Hopefully Robert's got something here up his sleeve. Let's try it. All right, let's try this. Can you pronounce this word and use it in a sentence? That's phishing with a PH, and I believe that refers to online scammers where they fish for people through their email. Okay. 100% phishing. People are phishing for your emails, absolutely. It's the way that this whole wonderful world of identity theft or identity fraud has started. Emails go out to hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of people asking for information. I received this one from American Express, and I know we do have a winner. Where's my Robert? Robert's right there. Um, hold tight for one second. We've got this link that came from American Express to me, and I blew it up, and it says, all you need to do is click on this link and fill out some information. Well, this information just happened to be everything about me and everything about my card, including my account number, my identification number, user ID, password, and even wanted me to create an emergency password. Basically, with this type of information, someone could have gone out and bought things on my behalf using my card because I provided a whole bunch of information that they needed. 
I would have been fished successfully, but luckily for me in this case, it was reported as a phishing website. We need to delete these types of emails. So basically, we want to avoid becoming a victim of identity theft. Basically, it can cost you thousands of dollars to get out of that, as well as it can take a lot of time to get out of being in trouble with identity theft or getting your identity restored. So what do you need to do? Shred those documents with important account information. Don't just give out your social security number to anyone. Make sure that you're initiating the phone call or the letter or whatever it is. Don't let somebody call you and say, I need to verify who you are, what's your social security number. Don't give it out in that case. Avoid those too good to be true emails which are saying, hey, I'm in a foreign country, I need to wire money to you. All I need is your wiring number and your account number. How many of us have ever seen those type of emails? Show of hands, okay? So basically, we're all receiving those same type of emails. Do not reply to them. Just in case if you uh, kind of are, want to make sure you don't get into trouble here, copy your wallet contact, so your license, your Visa, your MasterCard, whatever you got. Put them face down on a copy machine, flip them over, keep those copies, those papers somewhere in case your purse, your wallet does get stolen. That way you'll have a place where you can go to access the 1-800 number and the account number as well. Just please make sure that the copier that you use is not saving your information. If it's too late, file that police report. They're never going to catch these people unless you do that. Share your story with friends so that they don't run into the same trouble that you have. National Fraud Information Center is a great website to go to just in case you do get into trouble. And putting a fraud alert on your social security number will prevent other people from stealing your identity. How do you know if you're already a victim? Well, the first thing you can do is go to annualcreditreport.com. Now, love this site, not such a big fan of these two sites. These sites have great commercials, they have great marketing budgets, great advertising, freecreditreport.com, freecreditscore.com. Bottom line is, in order to have all those ads and things, they've got to charge you for something. So even this one right here says that it's going to cost you $14.99 for each month that you continue a membership for credit monitoring. Now, of course, it's going to tell you that there's a seven-day trial period where you can cancel that, but my bet and my guess is within those seven days, somehow you're going to have trouble contacting them. In other words, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So what's going to happen, you're going to go back to my site, annualcreditreport.com, and by mine, I don't mean it's the one I'm suggesting that you go to. It's actually a government-sponsored site, and you're going to fill in the information, and then it's going to ask you which of the credit bureaus you would like to receive your credit report from. Now, this is not your score. You can always pay for your score in addition. Today, you can go into Equifax and get your credit report. Four months later, TransUnion. Four months later, Experian. And four months after that, it's been a full year, you can go back and get your Equifax credit report. What I'm saying is you can actually monitor your own credit absolutely free without having to pay somebody else to do it. Now, granted, it'll be every several months. It won't be on a monthly basis. You know what? I do owe you some money. Would you like the booth or the bag? The, the bag. Now I've intimidated people to go into the booth. Sorry, here we go. Don't need to go into the booth at the end of the show. He's going to say, heck, no, I just pulled a $20 bill out of there. No way. All right, congratulations. Notice no one is clapping for him. They are not disappointed. <laughs> there is one less $20 bill in the bag. Speaking of bills, who is on the $5 bill? I've asked that of Jessica, Ivanka, and Raina. Jessica, Ivanka, and Raina, who would you like? Jessica. Uh, who would you like on the edge there? Ivanka. Uh, so I've got Jessica, Ivanka. I've got Raina. Uh, we'll go Raina in the gray hat right here. And here we go. Who is on the $5 bill? Jefferson. Jefferson. Got a Jefferson guess. Number two, Ivanka. Who is on the $5 bill? Abraham. Abraham Lincoln. Got an Abraham Lincoln guess. And finally, Raina. Who is on the $5 bill? Dead president. Folks, we've got two winners here. I need my Ivanka and my Raina. My Ivanka and my Raina. There we go. All right, a ten and a five dollar winner. Congratulations. Yes, Abraham Lincoln is on with that bill. All right, 
A slide I'm not really excited about, but I have to talk to you about it. When the bill collectors come knocking at your door, what are you going to do? Well, the first thing you need to do is answer the phone. I know I said knocking at your door, but I mean calling you, knocking at your door, sending you letters, whatever it is. Answer the phone, answer the letters, and when you answer the phone, tell the person on the other line the truth. Okay? They're going to be asking you for money. When are you going to start paying your bill? I need $50 a month from you. If you answer the phone and tell the person the truth, there's a chance that you can actually negotiate a payment to them. You can say, I can't afford $50 a month. I'm a full-time college student. I don't have any income. How about $10 per month? They'll probably be happy with any amount that you give them. If you're not comfortable doing that on your own, my advice is contacting a local nonprofit debt counselor. So somebody where you can walk into their office, talk to them. Not somebody that's going to say, I need $100 up front to do this for you. You just need some counseling on the best way in order to negotiate payments and keep your payments as low as possible. The National Foundation for Credit Counseling is a wonderful website that can direct you to a, a local nonprofit debt counselor. NFCC.org and then the 1-800 number is here. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about savings. So we've been talking about spending and avoiding spending. Now I want to talk about savings and what it will cost you. And I have this scenario where I say if you start saving at the age of 20 for 40 years until you're at the age of 60, how much money will you have? Well, if you start at the age of 20, and this is investing $100 per month, it's also talking about making a 10% interest on your investment. It might seem a little bit high, but I want to get the point across here. The earlier you start, the better. So here's at age 20, this person is going to have pocketed over $600,000. That 48000 of your own dollars is going to multiply into that over that 40-year period. If you wait one year to start investing, start at age 21, say goodbye to about $62,000. If you wait five years to start, say goodbye to a cool quarter of a million dollars. And if you wait 15 years to start investing, meaning you're only going to have 25 years, you're going to miss out on a half a million dollars in savings. Okay? Bottom line is, start soon. Start now, if you can. Think about where your money goes. Think about the fact that we're talking about $3 a day. And maybe early on, right now, you're not able to do the $100 a month. Maybe it's $20 a month, whatever you can afford to do. All these different things are what we spend our money on. Justin Timberlake's half-eaten French toast was auctioned off on a, on a radio show one time. How would you like to explain that to your significant other years from now? Uh, think about this question whenever there comes to be something you want to buy. Is it a want, something you just want, or is it a need? Try to lessen the amount of wants that you need, that you need to have and go definitely after the needs. And I think you'll probably find that you're able to save money. Financial aid money. Okay? If we have financial aid, occasionally we'll get a check. It's called an excess check. Okay, we'll receive it in the beginning of the semester. It could be for a few hundred dollars. The question is, what are you allowed to do with that money? Okay? So what I have is I have four quotes up here, and I want you to guess which is the smartest quote. So again, I need a one, two, three, and a four. There's no videos here. Uh, we'll go we'll go in, we'll go right here in the in the green. Two, two and four, uh, right here. Uh, one. one, and I've got three. Uh, we'll go three in the twins there. Here we go. Quote one, I usually use financial aid for my apartment. Good. Generally, it pays for all of it. The rest I use for food and other activities. Pretty good, right? We like one. Let's try two. At first, I buy school supplies and books. Right. Uh-oh then splurge on DVDs or just a party, and then conserve the rest to spend throughout the semester. Sorry, I'm going to have to go with number one over number two. Sorry, number two. Here's number three. I had a loan last year, and I used most of it for books and tuition. The rest I put in my SunTrust bank account, which is just for school stuff. Sorry, number one. I think that's our winner so far. But we still have number four left. Let's see what we've got. Quote number four. I buy really expensive food, <laughs> really expensive shoes, and pretty much anything else that I wouldn't want to buy with my own money. Now folks, I'm not even worried about the expensive food and the expensive shoes. This person actually doesn't believe that when they're getting that loan money, when they're uh, signing that check, that that becomes their own money. So 
Unfortunately, in that case, we are going to go with number three. The only thing I would do beyond what number three did is I would actually send that money back to where I was borrowing it from to start paying down my loan. Who is my number three? Where is my number three? Go. Bad. Got another five dollar winner. Congratulations. All right. We've got a little fun question here. You just took twenty dollars out of the ATM. What do the letters ATM stand for? Allie, May, and Jill. Uh, who would you like? Jill. Jill. Jill is done. Who would you like here? Allie. Allie. And I'm going to give you May. All right. You just took $20 out of the ATM. What does ATM stand for? Automatic um, transmitter machine. Automatic transmitter machine. Yeah. Okay, automatic transmitter machine. Uh, let's try Allie. You just took $20 out of the ATM. What does ATM stand for? Uh, automated teller machine. Automated. Machine. All right, we've got Allie's automated teller machine, and finally Jill. You just took twenty dollars out of the ATM machine. What does ATM stand for? Um, automatic time of money. <laughs> it's our Allie, person number one. Who's my person number one? Excuse me, do you have an ATM? Over there, ma'am. How much you want to take out? Forty dollars. There's a service charge of a buck fifty. Do you all accept? <laughs> Thank you. What are those dogs and toads? Why, this is the music of the angels. What is that magical device? Where go? Drop that screen. Oh, I feel so deliciously white trash. Mommy, I have a color. <laughs> All right, we were looking for automated or automatic color machine was our answer. Believe it or not, this was the first ATM. Look at that. That's a sharp piece of, awesome. piece of machinery there. Uh, basically, all of us in this room probably have used an ATM once in our life or more. How many of us have ever been hit with fees because we're using another bank's ATM? Be honest with me. Gosh, I've done it too, and I just hate it. I'm taking $20 out, and I'm paying $2 to take $20, or $2 to take $40 out. So my advice is obviously use your own bank's ATM. Using your debit card, and when they say, do you want to take cash out? Sure, rather than going again and paying for the ATM fee. Uh, online banking, if you do that, they'll most likely reimburse charges. Credit unions will also reimburse charges that you get for using a different bank. Yeah. Uh, Rhonda Jr. and Aurora, I said, uh, if I said you had overdraft protection, I'd be talking about your what? Yes or no, is he going to get this correct? Okay, we're going to go in the red there. What do you think? Oh. Yes or no? No, no he ain't going to. Yeah, he'll get that right. Okay, here we go. If I said you had overdraft protection, I'd be talking about... Hmm. Good sealed windows in my house. Good sealed <laughs> windows in your house. Checking account. Basically, you go below zero, you're going to get hit with an overdraft charge. Banking in this situation is the easiest, easiest math possible. It's a simple addition. You put money in, you take money out of subtraction. I talk to a lot of banks and they say a lot of students will look at their ATM receipt and they'll say, oh my gosh, the bank made a mistake. I actually have more money than I thought I did. Number one, banks don't often make mistakes and if they do, they correct them very quickly. Number two, it's probably the fact that something didn't, uh, didn't uh, balance out on your in your checking account. So all of a sudden, you think you have money, but you've actually already spent it, either with a check or some type of debit, debit that hasn't gone through. So don't get into that habit. Also, everyone should have a mental note of exactly how much they have in their checking account at all times. Frequently asked questions, should I get a credit card? 
I'm suggesting that if you feel you're responsible enough to have one, definitely go for it. Set up some reoccurring bill so you can pay your cell phone bill every month. Have that cell phone bill go right to the credit card. That way there'll be activity on your credit card. You can even leave your credit card at home so you don't get tempted to use it. Where do you go to get this credit card? Well, I suggest websites, bankrate.com is one of them that can help you pick the best uh, credit card for you. Your own bank, your credit union. But these days, people are having trouble getting credit cards, especially if you're below the age of 18. Also, if you um, don't have a job or don't have a co-signer. So what they're asking you to do is maybe get a secured card. Still going to look like the Visa or MasterCard that everyone else has. What's different is you are going to give them $200 or $300, and then you can charge up to that amount. All right? Then you're going to give them more money and charge up to that amount again. The good news with that is it is going to help your credit report, your credit rating. A lot of people will ask me, how about debit cards? Do those help your credit report? Absolutely not, because basically that is your own money. The debit card, you're just taking money from yourself. The credit card is actually a loan using somebody else's money. Something on your credit report is wrong, I strongly suggest you check it sooner rather than later. Send a certified letter, correct it. Online now, you can actually report discrepancies right there on each one of the credit bureau sites. If you pay your phone bill late in one month, you know, the key here is just get in the habit of paying your bills on time, no matter what it is. We all have Google calendars, we all have Outlook calendars, we all have reminders. Just get in the habit of scheduling those and then listening to those reminders when they happen. All right, this is a question. This is the one that you kind of have to look at. Finish this slogan. There are some things money can't buy. Looking for the rest of that slogan. In the pink coat right here? But for everything else, there's a MasterCard. Please tell me you want to go in the booth. There's our answer. Here we go. Little clip. Your first amp, $200. Your first strap, $30. Your first guitar, $450. Why don't we try? Rock and roll. Priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Except that everywhere music is. Excellent. Very good. You obviously watch your fair share of TV. I'll give you some cash here in a second. What I'll leave you with this evening, and thank you for being such a uh, attentive audience, get that credit card, be responsible using it. Remember how expensive late payments can be. I'm not talking about $30 here and $40 there. I'm talking about the fact that late payments will affect your credit report, your credit score, and then you'll be paying more over the long haul. Check your own credit report, annualcreditreport.com. Tell friends, tell neighbors it's an opportunity, not a sales pitch. Again, you will have to spend a few extra bucks for your score if you need it. Now, my advice is you don't need to look at your score now, just be making sure that there isn't anything erroneous on your credit report. If you can say it, even if it's the smallest amount, start as soon as possible. And again, I'd like to thank the staff here. Student Success Day for me was very successful. I hope everyone benefited from it. Uh, it's a great opportunity. I don't go to many schools where they have this kind of a day. So be very thankful that you have this opportunity to experience so many different things in a day. So thank you. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Can I talk you into the money booth? No way. Yes, I can. Come on. Let's do the money booth. She'll do it. All right. I'll make this. Who was my first money person? How, how did you do? Ten bucks. All right. Thank you for doing this. Are you ready? What's your name? Maisie. All right, Maisie. Go on in there. Oh no, it's her first word. Okay, here she is. Kick that money around. She is ready to go. In five, four, three, two, and one. Go, go!
down in five, four, three, two, and one. have any questions, again, I'll be here to answer those questions or do what I can. We'll watch Maisie Cowdell for money here, which looks like you did pretty well. Thank you very much.